Uh, good evening. I'd like to thank you all for coming tonight. Uh, it's my great honor and, and privilege tonight to introduce Mr. Kengo Kuma, one of Japan's greatest architects and the designer of Japan's new national stadium, his milestone achievement, which will host the 2020 Tokyo Summer Olympics and Paralympics next year. If you've seen it, you will know it is quite impressive with a, its wooden exterior set against the lush greenery of Meiji Shrine <coughs> Outer Garden. Born in Yokohama in 1954, Mr. Kuma received his master's degree in architecture from the University of Tokyo in 1979 and established his firm Kengo Kuma and Associates in 1990. His office has designed wide-ranging projects in over 20 countries and has won a host of prestigious awards, including the 1997 Architectural Institute of Japan Award and the 2016 Global Award for Sustainable Architecture. More recently, Mr. Kuma directed the overall design of the higher regency Beijing Wanjing, which opened last year in the Chinese capital. It won Luxury Art Hotel of the Year Award in October. Mr. Kuma is due to retire next year as professor of architecture at the University of Tokyo, a post he has held since 2009. Tonight, he is here to tell us about his most recent creation and to share his vision and philosophy of architecture, which aims to naturally emerge a structure with its cultural and environmental surroundings and find new materials to, re to replace concrete and steel. So without any further delay, let's welcome Mr. Kuma tonight. Uh, thank you, Robert, uh, that today is a uh, to have Robert as a as a moderator of the, uh, my talk is 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 great honor for me because I enjoy his book, Two Olympics. If that's an Olympic, is a, because as a, for me, Two Olympics is as a, are the turning point of my life. I was born 1954. The first Olympics is at the age of 10, and my father brought me to York Gymnasium. Designed by Kenzo Tange, there is a still the, that building is a, a sitting in front of Harajuku Station. Still looks very is a beautiful, and uh, and uh, at 1964, for for a ten years boy, it's like the miracle. As a, as a at that time Tokyo uh, was still the low silhouette wooden building city. And as in that kind of the, the chaos, the, the Olympic Stadium, Kenzo Tang, is, is, looks like reaching to the heaven. And, as, uh, and, as, and structurally, it is suspended structures, and the two clumps and the big loops, there's a cable wire, there's a, and uh, it's, it's very unique. And uh, on that day, so I so decided to become architect. And then, so without that building, <laughs> so I'm, I would not be here. And uh, and as a, and 2020, as a, I'm thinking, what should I do for uh, the the, uh, the the after the 2020? So as a, from 1964 to 2020, the Tokyo has many concrete buildings, concrete jankos. And, uh, and but after 2020, the, as a, we should as a, design the new new Tokyo. As a, my idea is to use wood to create new Tokyo. As a Olympic stadium, so I'm designing as a, as a, as a, if possible, as a, as a, can be a hint as what is possible after 2020. And but today, <coughs> I have many uh, images <coughs> about my recent project. But as, a, as a, for FCCJ, I want to talk about the importance of cultural exchange. The, for, as a, um, as a, for my Tokyo Olympic Stadium, people call it it's a wahoo building. It's a kind of Japanese style building. But as a, I, I learned many things from Japanese buildings, but it's, just a, it's very different from traditional building. 
and also people、uh, they want to call me Wano Taika. Wano Taika means a master of Japanese style, but I don't like that nickname. <laughs> I am not the master. I am not Wano master. As a, as a, I learned many things from following architects. The first the example I want to show you today is Hiroshige Museum. And Hiroshige is a famous ukiyo-e painter, and、uh, this is his masterpiece. And、uh, this is another masterpiece of him. And、uh, this guy, <laughs> this guy is a、uh, Vincent Van Gogh. Is a, is a did a copy, is a, made a copy of Hiroshige. It, it looks very funny, but as a, Vincent Van Gogh really respected Hiroshige, he tried to learn something from Hiroshige. And another good example of cultural exchange is Frank Lloyd Wright. So he also learned many things from Hiroshige, and he Frank Lloyd Wright mentioned. Without two Japanese artists, as a, I couldn't as a, as a create my style. The two Japanese artists, one is Hiroshige, and another Japanese artist is Tenshin Okakura. He was very much inspired by two Japanese as a great artists, and then and, and actually, I learned Japanese tradition through. The eye of Frank Lloyd Wright, because he is he was writing about the transparency of Japanese buildings. He was he was writing about the the deep eaves of Japanese buildings. The those vocabularies, <coughs> transparency and the eaves and shadows, I tried to、uh, apply to national the stadium, and then. And the result, the Frank Lloyd Wright, the as a, I can't understand the, Jap- the essence of Japanese style. The through the, the eyes of foreign artists, the we can understand Japan.、Uh, this is my experience. And as a、uh, this is a, the drawing of Lobby House in Chicago by Frank Lloyd Wright, and the, his way of paint,、uh, rendering. Very much inspired by the ukiyo-e style, the, and he actually was a big collector of ukiyo-e, and、uh, the, and the, as a as a deep eaves, and also as in, he tried to try to integrate vegetation and the building. As a, before him, the vegetation and the building totally separated, but、uh, he tried to. Please look at the detail of the plants. A, he he did such achievement, and my stadium. I also try to integrate vegetation and leaves. Is is the the shape is, shape wise it looks different, but concept as behind shape is a, is very similar to his works. As is my Hiroshige Museum, the deep leaves. And the use of wood, local wood, and creating shadows, the I learned from Frank Lloyd Wright. And also, the、uh, the for this building, as a I as a I I did a study about the environment of Japan. The the location of this building is very close to Satoyama. Satoyama <coughs> is a village mountain, and then before 19th century, the life of Japanese totally with Satoyama. People were using materials from Satoyama, and the the energy they they didn't have the energy company, no electric company, no gas company. The the mountain Satoyama itself was. The infrastructure of life, and then the the life totally related with Satoyama. But in 20th century, people have forgotten that kind of relationship. And、uh, and the, in and the shrine, as you see in the Satoyama, as a, is a symbol of the relationship. The message from shrine is, please. 
preserve Satoyama and uh, respect Satoyama. But, in, and the, but actually, in that village, the, the shrine was about already abandoned because the, everything in 20th century came from Tokyo. The material, infrastructure, energy, everything came from Tokyo, so, and as a mountain was abandoned. And for Hiroshige, for this Hiroshige Museum, I, t I as a, want to use the wood from the mountain behind, and uh, to use uh, the, the material from the mountain is, uh, is the best way to design the beautiful building. It's, it's a Japanese carpenter's proverb. They are always saying, best material is mate, mount, material from mount, just behind the mountain. And at uh, this Hiroshige Museum, also, I learned how to use wood and how to create shadow. Uh, and as I, I, I try to apply this idea to stadium. And to work with local Craftsman is also very exciting experience. A, in Japan, the good thing for Japan is that even in the small uh, the local, local town, that we can find good craftsmen. So now I'm working in uh, the different countries, but in China to find good craftsmen is really difficult. In Korea, also very difficult. But in Japan, still, so, so we can find very good craftsmen. And today is a <coughs> the time is limited. <laughs> 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 And the, and the question and answer is very important for FCCJ. So, uh, <laughs> as a, to, uh, but as a, is a, in China, so as a, I try to find the craftsmanship, the, as a, for my bamboo house project in China is close to Great Wall, so I I could use local bamboo from the place. As a entrance. The, but it's, it was very difficult to find construction company they 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 could, could construct it because they said bamboo is not mate, uh, material for building <laughs> but i said why so in hong kong the the scaffold as another scaffold scaffold is all made by bamboo at that time they said it is a temporary is a scaffold, not for permanent building. And, but finally, I could find very nice as a small construction company. They they could do that. Okay. And as in Europe, as also uh, after two thousand, uh, the the wooden building is a kind of boom. So in Italy, as we worked with my student to build this small pavilion, as I got a hint from a small toy from Hida Takayama. Hida Takayama has a, has a strong tradition as a, of wooden buildings. It's a very small system without any metal, so they can fix those joints. And so we, as after that experience, we applied the system to permanent building. So it's a 10 meters high building it's without any column. The only small sticks support the building. But as, a, as outside of Japan, to find this kind of craftsmanship, this kind of carpenter, is, is a, almost impossible. It's a treasure of Japan, I believe. And for the small village Yosuhara, so we designed the wooden bridge museum, because that bridge, that as a town, Yosuhara, has Shimanto rivers, so there, there existed wooden bridges before 19th century. 
And if as a learning as a this as a uh, 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 this for this bridge, we worked with small factory in Yusuhara. And the, the small local factory the only uh, could produce the as a glue lamp wood as a as this size, as a, as a less than thirty centimeters, the small dimension. And as a so also for national stadium, we did use the same dimension of glue lamp. The for the big stadium, it's not usual to use this small dimension, because the glue for glue lamp technology, the to use one meters height, two meters height, is very easy. It's more easy for a big bigger building, but to use small factory, to use small dimension wood is important for the Olympic of 2020, I think. And then I will show the, the detail of the small uh, the dimension, small size glue lamp uh, the, in, in, the, in, uh, in the stadium building. And for the same village, Yusuhara, we got a hint from this small the, as a cafe, as a cafe before, uh, before 19th century, people, <laughs> the peop, people love that cafe. As a, the same material was used for the facade of the building. It's a thatch. <laughs> but as a, as a, but luckily we could find a very good craftsman who can make the, this thatch block. He's more than 70 years old, but he's still active. And as a, as a unique, for a unique client, Starbucks, we designed the Dazaifu Starbucks. So this is in front of Dazaifu Tenmangu. It's a very unique location in front of, of major uh, the shrines. As a, uh, and as a, we propose to work with special craftsmen. It's not decoration. It's a structure of the building. And then the normal Starbucks, the construction schedule is three or four months, but for this building more than one year. That, that <laughs> and, uh, as, a, as, a, as a beginner, they are very upset to hear this as a schedule. But uh, finally, as a, it's be, it becomes a, uh, one of the most Instagrammable Starbucks <laughs> in the world. <laughs> And uh, also, the, uh, the in Aoyama, the, we designed this pineapple cake shop. As I got a hint from pineapple, as, uh, that, uh, but as a it's not decoration; it's a structure of the building. That to use the the small sticks is a Japanese tradition, because as a, the, to use small sticks is good for forest. To cut the carefully and plant carefully, and to use. The, is a, not to use a, the big wood is very sustainable. And uh, the, because of that uh, is a method, the still the, the percentage of Japanese forest is, is, a, is around 70%. It is one of the highest ratio in the, uh, in the world. And it is coming, that percentage coming from Japanese method of using forest. And also the small dimension of wood as a, as a, as a gives an intimate impression to the space. The Japanese wooden house, most of the, the columns and beams is a, uh, are less than 10 centimeters. And it's, it's very, sm very small, looks very fragile, but it gives the as a human scale to the building. I should go to the stadium. Jipari <laughs> Maska. And in the center of Tokyo, in front of Asakusa Sensoji, in front of that Kaminari Mon Gate, so we designed this tourist center. As a request from the, the Taitoku is a, is a 40 meters high building. 
the 40 meters is no small building. There is a, as a we thought, the 40 meters towers uh, will, will not fit the scale of Sensoji Temple and the den. So we divided the big volume into seven pieces and for each floor we can feel as a, as, a, uh, as a kind of wooden building atmosphere. It's a rendering of the project, it's a realization of the project. As a, as a, as a, but uh, as a, as a still, as a seven years ago, we couldn't use wood for main structure of the building. But uh, as a two years ago, as a, as a Japanese government changed it, building court, and if we can, can do now, as a, we could use, we can use uh, the wooden, wooden columns for the main structure of the building. As a, I want to try for next project. It's a small, as a Lakugo theaters for the fourth floor of the building. There's a cafe, there's a look down, the Sensoji temple. There's a big comparison, the steel towers and the wooden towers. And in China, as a, before as a starting the project in China, I thought as a, as a Chi Ch Chinese city as a, uh, 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 didn't want to have the wooden building. But, uh, but, it's, but it's, it's not like that. So in the Hangzhou, we designed this museum. The materials was a old ceramic roof tile. And the, 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 in China, the roof tile in China is handmade. And I like the textures of handmade roof tile. So we re recycled the old material for the roof of the new museum. And this is a detail of the screen and the effect of the screen, so creating shadow. And as uh, in Beijing, as also as, a, as a, we had a great experience with as a craftsman. Chenmen is, is located in as a south of Tiananmen Square. Uh, and it used to be like that. It's a kind of slum. There's abandoned houses, abandoned courtyard houses, and many developers that came to here as a requesting to build a skyscraper, demolish everything. But the people so living there was against that idea, and also the, the journalism as American journalism, some European journalism newspapers, the uh, load against the, the skyscraper. And finally, the Chinese government decided to preserve that area. And four architects were invited, and, as, uh, and then as, uh, we have the, 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 this new district. So I, I, I did the, the, some buildings in that district, and uh, this is my office in Beijing. I really enjoy the, the life of the street. And as a Chinese as a courtyard house looks like brick building, but behind the brick there exists beautiful wooden structure like that. Like that. It's just amazing. And uh, as uh, I try, I, I, I could find very good old carpenters from China, and he re restored that beautiful wooden structure. And in Europe, so we have so, so some wooden project, wooden buildings. It is a project in France, Besançon, and the Seiji Ozawa is the one the first prize for the international the comp conductors contest is in this town, and this is a venue for that contest. As a, we also, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a use the Engawa idea, as a create shadow, as a create semi outdoor space between the, the environment and building, local material again.
And uh, this, uh, it's a, it's a newest project in Paris is a station in San Doni Play L. San, San Doni is a, is a, is a, is a, is a not a good area, <laughs> you know, as you know. So, and, uh, but uh, so my idea is to, uh, to, to create the new public space on the station and with the wooden station. As a, as a, and as a, it's a big, as a big discussion with the, the French railway company. Is a railway company. It's a big company. So they, from the beginning, they said, no wood for the station. <laughs> but but as a, we, as we showed them the special treatment, as a, a fire resistant and anti graffiti treatments, and so finally we could use wood for the build, for the station building. And in state, as a, as a Portland, Oregon, is my first public project in state, and as a very intimate, beautiful as a location, <laughs> and as a, it's a Japanese garden museum, as a, and, a, and as, a, as a as a as a planning as a, it was inspired by Katsura Villa, but the detail wise is a, we did use some new material. The rooftop with plants, green, and the openable windows, mm -hmm. and the look of Portland wood. And as uh, so in Scotland, as a it's a new project in UK. So I got a hint from a landform of sea cliff. As uh, in 20th century, natures and architectures belonging to totally different the world. But, as a, but now, as a, I, sometimes I got a hint from landform. As a, as a, as a sea cliff is beautiful there, and uh, I tried to bring that idea to my building because the location-wise is, is is almost is in the river, and, uh, and then so it's a it's a it's an artificial building, but still, so got a hint from topology and landform. And the uh, people really, as a, as a, uh, like my idea, and uh, especially the main hall of this building, we call it living room for the city. It's not space for art; it's a living room for the community. And uh, then they they use my nick, my word, living room for the city. Is that they <laughs> they did use for the tote bag and for the pamphlet of the museum. And wood changes atmosphere of the space. It's a magic of wood. And in Australia, there's a in the in the center of Darling, Ex Darling Harbor in Australia, Sydney, a, it's a real wood, and the people call it ramen building. It looks like ramen <laughs> 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 because it's very close. It's adjacent to Chinatown, in, <laughs> and then the ramen building is good good nickname for the building. And, uh, and in Turkey also, I was very surprised to uh, get a commission from Turkey because wood and Turkey are in relationship, but Oden Pazari is the name of the location. Oden means wood, Pazari means a bazaar, and it's a wooden market. The old name came from the wooden market. So they had the big forest in Turkey, but it disappeared. And, but the, those buildings, the adjacent buildings, are, are, the, are made by wood. The Osman Tolko era, so we also as a bring back that idea to the city. So not Istanbul, it is a, as a Oden Pazar in Eskishehir. Eskishehir. Yeah, as so, and as finally, as the last project I show you today is stadium building. It's was 90 percent done. And as uh, in the in the Meiji Gaiyan, as a uh, Meiji Jingu Gaiyan, as uh, it's a it's a uh, the one of the, the most important sh uh, the forest in Tokyo. As uh, we try to as a uh, drop the height of the building as possible as can. And uh, so finally, we, the, the highest point is 47 meters 
The old uh, the stadium is, is built in 1958. The top of the building is 60 meters. We tried to drop the height as possible as can. And also the, we got a hint from the eaves of the building. The flangloid light, light really like that idea. The, to create the, the shadows by eaves and as a, and as a, and the, instead of the vertical wall, the series of the eaves can give the intimate scale to the building. And also the eaves protects the building from laying. And this is a Holyuji temple. It's built seventh century. It's one of the oldest wooden buildings in the world. As a, as a, and then as a, as a, we still can learn many things from old buildings. And uh, as for the as a, for the roof of the, the building, as I, I mentioned before, the size of the glue lamp beams is 30 centimeters, and uh, and then the effect of eaves is is something like as a canopy of forest. The natural ventilation is um, as, uh, maybe as uh, you, we want to ask about the marathon in the Olympic. <laughs> as, uh, uh, the natural ventilation is very important for this as a project. And uh, as, uh, as a, the section of the building, the series of as a four, four eaves as a, as a, is uh, designed to bring natural wind, natural ventilation as possible as you can. And in this hot summer, in this year, the summer was also very hot. As a, because of these sections, and as a, people always can feel breeze in the building. And uh, every day, there's more than 2,000 workers there. But in this summer, the no nature show. Nature show. Heat stroke. Heat stroke. Heat stroke. <laughs> as a, no heat stroke in the summer. It is unusual. And uh, the construction company is very proud to, uh, to, uh, to have that kind of record. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But only the marathon is another issue for them. <laughs> 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 and the recycled materials, is, uh, and uh, this is uh, as, a, as, a, as a sky, as a globe of the sky, as, as, a, as a, we call it, globe of the sky. As a, as a globe of the sky is, you can see the as a, as a one two three as a four layers, as above four layers we have this globe of the sky. This is a open as a uh, walkway. As a this is open to public every day of the year, and. Uh, and the view from the sky globe is with, with these plants is amazing. As already, the plants are there, and we can enjoy the, the view of the, the Gaian forest from this the raised platform. And it's, it's a, it's a, we took these pictures in August. It's already 98% has done. And so you can see the wood. And uh, as again, the dimension is very important. So less, this is a, a ten, less than 10 centimeters width of plank. And as a, it gives a very different atmosphere from concrete building. And then so again, going, going back to Futatsuno Olympic, to Olympics, the, the, the 1964 Olympic, the old, old the building is very heroic. The heroic gestures and very vertical, but instead the, we try to create horizontality and intimacy and warmness as a, as a totally opposite. And then the, uh, the, I, I, it's, it's a message from the, the, uh, the, from, from the Tokyo is because Tokyo has a long history of wooden buildings and a long history of sustainable urban design. And uh, after 2020 Olympic, the Tokyo can show the example to the world. As a, this is the end of my talk today. Thank you.
Uh, thank you very much. That was a delightful talk. Um, now I'd like to open up the, the floor for questions. Uh, who has the microphone? Who's passing around? How do we do this? You come up to the front here, state your name and your affiliation, and ask questions. Start with you, sir. あの、まず、えっと、実際質問が2つありまして、1つあの、熊先生の著書も読ませていただきました。その中で今日お話にあった、コンクリートを使ったもの、それから木を使ったものという話も読ませていただいたんですけども、もう1つあの、19世紀の
あの今はまだ建築の世界ではスターアーキテクトっていうのはなんか超高層ビローとすごいかっこした超高層ビローを建てることがスターアーキテクトっていうところはまだありますけれども僕はやっぱそれは変わっていくと思っていてそういうなんかその目立つビルのデザインをしてそのビルのこう値段を上げたりとかそのコンドミニアムの値段を上げたりっていう時代は僕はすごい幻覚に見えてると思いますでそういう時にそのアジアのエネルギーがどういう街を作るかとかねどういう建築を作るかっていうのは非常に興味深くて僕はやはり木というものと自然の素材ローカルな自然の素材を使ってそれでそのローシルエットな低い建物災害が来てもやっぱり高い建物でいろんな不安が災害が来るためにみんな不安を強くしていると思うんですけどそういう低い建物っていうのはやっぱり人間精神的に非常に人間を安定させますからそういうものっていうものがこれから一つの建築の中心になっていくと思いますね。So I would like to answer your first question.、Um, your comment is true, and there are these things called star architects in every time、um, of the age and in geographies too. So as you mentioned, as an example, there was the Renaissance and the Baroque time in Europe where architecture was very vibrant. That is where they had the, the The biggest buzz regarding architecture at that time. And then、um, that led to some religious architecture, which continued to lead the world. Then again, in 20th century, it was the US super high rise skyscrapers that became the, the,、uh, the center of the、um, conversations among us. And then it's always like this a, it's a combination of the geography and the type of program or the star architect that represents the age. So, to your question, what is going to be、uh, the star in the 21st century or what will be centric in architecture design? Well, I'm very interested in that topic. I, st I still have、um, various thoughts, but I'm definitely sure that Asia will come up as one of the centric geographies in the 21st century because every time I go around the world lecturing in universities, it's always the Asian students who are very passionate. They're all over the world, and every place I go to,、um, unfortunately, amongst the Asians, there's not much Japanese. Japanese students, and that's a pity, but it's usually the Koreans, the Chinese students that are very passionate to hear from me. It's very different from when I was studying in Columbia universities in the 1980s because wherever I went to study, we always had Japanese buddies around. So that has changed. And,、um, so, and, and even the、um, American universities right now are hiring Chinese professors so that they can entice and accommodate more Chinese students. So I'm definitely sure that these Asian students will be、uh, up and rising and they will lead the energy towards the next trend in architecture in the 21st century. The next question is what kind of building, what kind of urban design will they?、Um, Develop as a conclusion. And this also is a very interesting topic to me. What will be the star architect? Well, currently, still the star architect is the super skyscrapers, but it will change. I'm, I'm sure that there will be a limit to trying to make the buildings stand out or trying to raise the price as much as possible. That a kind of、um, approach is very much reaching the limit, in my opinion. So it's.、Um, In my opinion, I think it will be again the wood, the natural material, and the low silhouette. Because, you know, for example, in the cases of natural disaster, just always makes us uncertain the higher the building is. So I think for mental stability as well,、um, the buildings will become lower silhouette. Second question. Second question? あセカンドクエスチョンはマラソンの件かそうか僕は答えなきゃ。セカンドクエマラソンの件はですね、確かに。あのあの僕は実はあの外苑の辺は学生の頃から外苑の辺りでイチョウ並木とかのテニスクラブとかでしょっちゅう遊んでいたのであの何度かあのイチョウ並木をこうラソンダンダが走ってくる光景っていうのをってあの応援してそれは本当に感動的なんですね。その自分がの住んでいる町がマラソンランナーが来るだけで全く違うものに見えてなんでこんな同じ町なのにこんなに感動するんだろう。っていう思いを何度もしてるから、やっぱりすごくその意味では残念です、ね。<笑>で、それがまたまあその国立競技場のその木の外苑の森からその木のと木のスタジアムにこうスーッとこう木から木に入っていくのを見たかってきたって気持ちはすごくありますので。ただまあいろいろな事情があったんだと思いますが、まあまああのある種都市。っていうもの
とオリンピックってすごく関係してるわけですよね、やっぱりその年をセレブレートするイベントで、その時にマラソンっていうのは、やっぱりその年の本当に一番美しいところをこセレブレートするイベントだから、それがないっていうことは、うん、ちょっと悲しいかなと。And to your question、uh, regarding the marathon, I'd like to talk about when I was again younger, when I was a student, I was in that exterior garden right there amongst the ginkgo trees and, and、um, in the tennis club as well. And I very much enjoyed that place. And I was especially moved and touched when the marathon runners would run through the ginkgo trees because it just made the same city look totally different as I would watch those runners、uh, with such moving、um, emotions, you know. So to your question, my comment. Comment would be that I will miss seeing the marathon in, in the na national stadium, really, because、um, I would have liked to see the athletes run, run into the, the, the wooden structure and into the trees. But I understand that there were some circumstances that、um, led to a different conclusion. But I still think that you know, the Olympic and Paralympic Games、um, have one of its purposes is to celebrate the city. And I would think that having the marathon run through that is、um, one of the ways to really enjoy the beauty of the city.、Um, and and I really、um, think it's unfortunate that I will not be able to see that. Thank you. Okay, the gentleman back there. Uh, my name is Richard Tusilo、uh, from Indonesia.、Uh, since you are talking about the Asian energy, so after you retired from Tokyo University, why don't you come to Indonesia, give us your knowledge, everything? The question is not that one. The question is I knew Mr. Ken Gokuma、uh, very well, and、uh, he got a lot of projects also in Indonesia. I would like to hear a little bit about your development project in Indonesia. Thank you very much. インドネシアも、えー、と実はまあ昔からインドネシアのこともすごくあのひじあの大好きであ,の、まあ、あ,のああいうインドネシアで仕事できたらいいなという思いがあってあのプロジェクトの大きさと関係ないんです僕を聞き受ける時は。やっぱその場所がすごく面白かったりとかそれをやろうとしている人がすごく面白かったりするとそれはもう全然ビジネスと関係なくその仕事を引き受けてるんですけどあのバリでも今あの一つプロジェクトが動いてますけど忘れられないのはインドネシアの小さな島でそ,のそこのいろいろなあのリサイクルの材料で。ちっちゃな工場をやってる人がいてそれこそプラスチックとゴミとかなんかを海に捨てられるものをそのリサイクルして建材に使えないかってことをやってる人がいてその人もすごく面白かったしでそのあの島でに来てくれって言って本当に小さな島なんですけど行ったらそこに泊まった時で夜その部屋の壁一面シロアリで目が覚めたら壁が全部仕上げがアリが仕上げなんですよね。壁一面が真っ白アリで僕映画の一心かと思ったんですけど、まあ、それは僕もやっぱそういう体験ができるところがいろんな,いろんな面白いところで仕事をしていることの醍醐味でやっぱしあのいろいろなところで実はいろいろな面白い動物に会ったりして建築,建築を楽しんでます。うん Um, so,、um, to your question, I would like to first talk about my love for Indonesia because I've really loved the country from a long time ago and I've always wanted to, I've always wanted to work in Indonesia. You know,、um, in general, when I accept a commission of a project, I don't choose it by how large scale the project is. I choose it because the place is interesting or the people are doing something very interesting to me. It really doesn't matter in terms of the business terms, actually, to me. So, Indonesia, I have one.、Uh, Project going on in Bali.、Um, there was this small island, and it was an interesting place to me. So I did take the work, and、um, I, I can't forget that I was、um, staying in that little island、uh, to, to start my project. And when I stayed the night and got up, the whole wall was covered with termites. The, wa the wall was like made of termites. It was that, that covered. And、um, well, it was a.、Um, Extraordinary experience, but that's the kind of unforgettable memory that I really enjoy when I work in such interesting places. And there's these interesting people, too. There was this person who was trying to recycle materials that are plastic or trash and trying to turn them into some architectural material ins instead of throwing them away in the ocean. This is what intrigues me.、Uh,
<coughs> Siegfried Knittel, freelancer from Germany. <coughs> there was some criticism, criticism at uh, the building of the stadium because they said uh, you used uh, the, the company used uh, wood, uh, wood from uh, Indonesia from a not a sustainable, uh, not sustainable uh, growing wood, a kind from a, from a rich from the jungle uh, use it and uh, uh, and you're not using perhaps uh, the, uh, Japanese uh, uh, wood. Could you uh, correct this or tell some, something about? And the other, the other point is, I think it impressed me. You said, talked about a flat uh, uh, style of building now, uh, wooden building. I think in Germany and in Austria, they want to build high scrapper with a wooden high scrapper. So uh, more than 100, 100 or 200 meters high. Uh, could you, do you know, have you an, a, a knowledge about this and what could you say about it? えっと、この現場うちのコンクリートだとどうしても未だにその内容材の方が使うことが多いんで、それを避けてプリキャストコンクリートにしようということで基礎までそのプリキャストコンクリートをやるっていう例は非常に今珍しい例なんです。でもそれはこれから
あの十数階建ての建物があのヨーロッパドイツ、まあ、ドイツは代表ですけどヨーロッパでいっぱい作られるようになりましたで僕はそれはコンクリートのマンションに代わってそういう木のマンションができるのは都市にとってはすごくいいと思いますけどでも別に木高さを競う必要は別にそんなにあのなくて。20世紀はどうしても高さで話題を作るっていう時代だったので木ではこんな高さができるぞっていうようなことが話題作りになったけども木ということ自身はあんまり高さの文明とはちょっと関係ないかなっていう気もするので無理に高さを追求する必要もなくてあのむしろロースシルエットの木のものっていうのが一番木の良さが生きると思ってます。So, in terms of your、uh, second half of your question,、uh, I understand that there is a trend now that、um, the wooden structured buildings also are trying to become taller. That is、um, endorsed by the technology called CLT, and we can process the wood, wood in a way that you can build 10 floored buildings now. And I know that's、uh, seen right now in Germany or Europe. And、um, I, I think it's a good thing that we're replacing con more concrete into trees when you build a condominium or buildings like that. But I, I don't see the point in com competing in the height of the building. That's what we have been doing in the 20th century, trying to gain, gain、um, spotlight for the building by talking about how tall it is. But the civilization of height really is、um, not the trend right now. Again, it's the low silhouette, I think,、uh, made by wood that is、um, the trend. Hello,、uh, my name is Ilgin, and、uh, I'm a freelancer from Turkey. So we're very happy to have one of your buildings there.、Uh, my question is about Turkey.、Um, What surprised you the most when you first visited the country in terms of architecture? Because in Istanbul,、uh, there's a trend that the more concrete, the more high rise, the more developed a country looks like and feels like. What is your view on that? And also, if you could very, very、uh, shortly tell us what are the biggest threats to these treasures of Japan, like Monotsukuri or the Satoyama, the biggest threats for future? Thank you. Turco, the どんどん高層ビルのブームが大体起きているのはそうなんその通りなんですね。でもこの僕のさっきのあのエスキシェヒルのプロジェクトのクライアントは、えっ、ー、とそういうものじゃないものを僕らが提案したらそれに対してすごくそのサ,サポーティブで、で彼自身がトルコのいろんな歴史を調べたらば、その昔はオスマンジオスマントルク時代はその木の建物がこのエスキシェヒルはもうダーッと街道を作っててちょうど日本の中山道みたいな感じでずっとあの木の建物が並んでる街道があって今もその一部が残ってるんですけどでで昔はトルコももっと森林の率が高くてでそういうトルコをその取り戻すそうじゃないかっていうことで意気投合したんですね。なのでえー、と僕らが知らないいろんな木の文明っていうのが世界のいろんなところにあった。と思っていていトルコはその中でもあの実はそのさっき見せたオスマントルコの時代の木の建物もすごくクオリティが高いのであの僕ら日本だけがうまいと思ってたけれども実はトルコもすごいうまい大師さんがあの伝統があったんじゃないかなと感じましたただ,こただこの建物にさっきの建物に関しては、えー、とやっぱりその僕の木の建物を勉強したいって言ってトルコからいろみんなこれチームが来てくれて僕の日本の建物をいくつか回って。その工場も回ってすごくいろんなことを学んでくれたのでそれはとすごいいいエクスチェンジになったと思います。So, you're right to say that currently in Turco, there, Turkey, there's a boom for、uh, high skyscrapers right now.、Uh, but the、uh, client that commissioned us that、um, uh, modern art museum in Eskishir Esk 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 is.、Um, Was different because I, I gave a proposal that is that was not a high rise or a skyscraper, and they were very supportive about my proposal. Now, when we look at the history of Turkey and the buildings there, there was the、uh, Osman Turkey time when there was actually a lot of wooden buildings, and there was a main street in Turkey as well where they had lots and lots of wooden、uh, buildings、uh, standing next to each other, like the Nakasendo in Japan, and there was a much higher greenery. 
ratio in Turkey in the past. So we were having a discussion with this, um, the client of the Modern Art Museum and saying, let's get back the greenery that we had in Turkey. And we very much agreed to that point, And that's why it all started. And when I look around the world, there are several places where they have the wood civilization or the civilization based on wood. But um, I, I found out that the uh, wood, wood quality in, or the wood and structure quality in Osman Turco, Turkey was very high. You know, I had thought that uh, the carpenters that are very good at dealing in wood was only in Japan, but that was not true. There were some very good carpenters in Turkey, uh, but then still, uh, some of the um, people in Turkey saw the art museum and were very interested to learn from me as well. I'm happy to say, and they came all the way to Japan and looked around, around some of the factories to learn our techniques too. So that was a great exchange. Yes, up right there. <clears throat> Professor Kuma, I'm an exchange student from UBC in Canada. We're so excited for your new project on Alverni Street, Alverni by Kuma. Um, um, I just wonder if you could share with us like your most treasured memory of being an architect. いや、あの、あの、えっと、その、そういう不燃化したものはそういうパブリックスペースも使えるっていうふうにこれからだんだん世界中でなっとくなっていくんじゃないかなと思いますね。でもとても彼らの人たちは逆に僕はすごくいろいろあのコンストラクションカンパ
the, I think I should translate the question as well. So the question is very simple. Is your own house made of wood? Second question, did you design it by yourself? <laughs> so, so he's talking about two houses, the one where he grew up as a boy. It's in Yokohama, as was introduced. It's still there. My mother and younger sister live there, and it is made of wood because it's the pre-war type of wooden house that, that was typically um, there at the time. The house that I currently live in is in Kagurazaka, myself and my wife, and then my wife's younger sister and her husband, so two couples live together, so therefore it's a four-storied house. And since it's four-storied, we're still not allowed to make a four-storied building with wood. So unfortunately, it is not wooden. And by the way, I had my wife design it, to, to your question, because that is the way I can avoid getting complaints about the house. <laughs> Uh, in the back row there. Mitsuya uh, Goto, a life member of this club and, and uh, ex-Nissan executive who got to build Nissan's Smyrna, Tennessee plant and also one in England at the behest of Mrs. Thatcher. The question I have is, what did you, I, I met you at the Hara Museum of Contemporary Art when they had Zaha Haddad's uh, sculpture on display in the garden. And uh, I served on the the World of Hara Museum for 20 years. What did you think of Zaha Haddad's original Tokyo Olympics stadium design? Uh, did you also design the library of International Liberal Arts University in Akita? あきたのリベラルアーツのごめんなさい最後のご質問の部分えっとでも基本的にはですねザハさんの新興国立のデザインについてどう思うかということですあのザハさんはですね実はあのコンペであのよくその最後のファイナリストって言うんですけど最後
Zaha, uh, Ms. Hadid is very strong in competitions. Usually when we're in competitions, there's like five or six finalists on the shortlist. I lose most of them when she's in the shortlist. I've been in the shortlist together with her many times, and I've experienced a three consecutive defeat when she was there for the Istanbul, Beijing, Sardinia Island um, competitions. I can, I can remember all these um, defeats I've had, and it's because her models and her Perth is just very impactful, the way she presents it, and of course her design capability is high as well. And the message that comes from the form of the building is quite powerful. And, but you know, so I, I think that she is a very, very talented person. But having said that, you know, I've, as I've mentioned earlier, I've been around in the area where the new national stadium is right now. I've been playing tennis in the club when I was a, since I was a student. And I've, I did have a question on her solid, hard texture of her national stadium design. It's so white and hard looking, and I was wondering if that really fits that exterior garden part of the Meiji Shrine. I think, again, that rather than a very sharp form, we should place more care in the materials and also have human scale. Uh, okay, sorry. Christoph Neidart, Freelance. Uh, just to follow up on this, I mean, you were a second choice and you uh, stressed these opposites between 1964, where it was monumental and architecture and, and heroic, as you said, and now you want to be small scale and, and low. And I, I, I certainly understand your intention, but I feel like you're in contradiction to the organizers who actually do uh, everything else monumental. They build a new rowing channel, although there is a rowing channel, and they chose this really monumental uh, uh, structure by Hadid. So are you contradicting the organizers? So this is a monument. なんか人間とその別の形での<笑> 例えばこう軒を見上げた時にその木の組み方とかそのその なんか写真がやっぱ中心だったんじゃないかと思うんですね。で、写真で見るとそういう質感とかちょっとしたディテールってほとんどわかんないですから、こういう小さな写真で、で、僕らが建築を習った時もそういう小さな写真で建築を習
it, it, it's more striking when the form is extraordinary. When you have like a very radical silhouette, it looks wonderful in a piece of photo. But I would like to propose people living beside or be, being beside the architecture and looking up at the eaves and being there next to the architecture in that way so that not through the f photographic eyes but from their very being they can be amazed or touched by the architecture that they stand by. And it's not a matter of the silhouette. It's, it's really about the details and the materials. Okay, I'm sorry, we have to uh, close it down now. <clears throat> I'd like to thank you very much for coming tonight, uh, Mr. Kuma. <laughs> it's an honor for this club to have you, and uh, as a gesture of our gratitude, we'd like to give you uh, an honorary membership. So please come back with your family and friends and visit us again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.